There are so many fields wherein children are neglected and unnecessarily they go to the pharmacy and take the medication which is just off the board. The child starts getting plumper and people think the child is healthy. Affordability is a question. Getting proper food is a question. It's all about education. It's all about financial stability. Dr. Halima Yazdani, a renowned general physician and a diabetologist and a prominent figure in the field of telemedicine who has over two decades of experience. Recognized globally as the future 50 clinical leaders of telehealth by HIMSS, Dr. Halima has received numerous awards for her services, including volunteering to help over 7,000 patients during COVID-19. She is currently serving as the Vice President of HIMSS, Healthcare Information Management System Society, India. Dr. Halima Yazdani is here with us today to share her insights into the issues concerning the child health in India and the blooming field of telemedicine. Can you please share your insights into the issues that are concerning child health in India, especially malnutrition and what are its consequences? And are there any specific policies or initiatives to address these issues? Yeah. See, nutrition in a well-balanced way can change life, especially when coming, uh, when we're talking about children. Children basically, uh, you know, they are the... I would say the stones of the future and definitely the entire uh, situation of the way children are treated and the way uh, the you know, food habits, all that, they, it carries a lot of weightage in their growing age, especially starting from neonates up to the early infancy and so on and so forth. So if I'm talking about child malnutrition, there are so many fields wherein children are neglected and the nutrition is definitely deficient. Especially I'm talking about vitamin D deficiency, there is calcium deficiency, multivitamins and everything. If I'm talking about protein malnutrition, uh, which is uh, rampantly seen in India, it is basically because of multiple factors. First, we have people who are not educated, people don't know the value of nutrition, people don't know that balanced diet in fact plays a vital role in upbringing of the child and in the child's future. Protein malnutrition is one of the major factors which we are fighting with in the current age. And uh, there are two particular consequences of protein malnutrition. One is Cauchy-Urquhart disease, other one is marasmus. Wherein the child starts, in one of the problems as Cauchy-Urquhart, the child starts getting plumper and people think the child is healthy. But no, if you're looking at a plump child who is weak, please consider protein malnutrition. Cauchy-Urquhart disease is one of the major factors wherein children are deficit in proteins and they cannot move forward and their particular uh, growth is hindered. People see the child and say they are very chubby and very very healthy but most of the time it is not so. We have to look, especially for chubby children, we have to look at protein malnutrition, vitamin D deficiency which is definitely a very important factor. In marasmic child, there is a lot of uh, loss of buccal pad of fat, loss of subcutaneous fat and the child looks very dehydrated. So any child with thin hair, dehydration, consider protein malnutrition. Looking at the situation where our country is in, of course there are middle class and upper middle class who know the value and they basically might be educated enough to in fact you know, uh, get their child out of the whole uh, stuff of malnutrition. But even then, you know, people go in for junk food, children are given some food which is basically not at all uh, rich in nutrition. The, it is just that something which a child takes and the parents have no time to pursue the child to take a lot of uh, balanced diet. Whatever the child is happy eating, they give it to the child and that is done with it. Even if it is very less in nutrition and even if it is a lot of, contains a lot of calories and uh, in fact empty calories and junk food. In the lower strata like poverty driven areas, wherein the uh, affordability is a question, getting proper food is a question, then whatever the child the food receives and child, the child receives or whatever food it receives, they give it to them. So I would recommend people to go on very high, you know, protein rich diet for children and uh, people who can really afford there are a lot of sources there is milk there is paneer there's a lot of uh, sources for children if non-vegetarian food also contains a lot of proteins but people who cannot afford please dal 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 very very important take more of lentils give more of lentils there is chana there are different sources which can build proteins in the children so make sure your child has a healthy diet there are a lot of programs coming up with the government of india who is basically launching Midday meals, you know, already midday meals is going on, gives a very protein rich and nutritious diet to the children. So if people who cannot afford or provide it to the children, please get, get them to the school so that they can get a proper nutrition and uh, balanced diet. There is at least one egg which is being given, which is very, very high in proteins. 
So I would emphasize and re-emphasize the need of proteins in children and uh, please make sure it is adhered to. Thank you. Um, are there any regional variations in child health, uh, uh, child health outcomes within India? And if so, uh, what is leading to these disparities? Regional outcome again depends on the financial stability of the place. If I am talking about south part of India, uh, I am sure there are not such places wherein uh, people are not educated or don't know much about uh, proteins and no, don't know much about uh, nutrition. But there are certain places in certain areas in north and south as well wherein people don't know. It's not about the regional disparity, it's all about education, it's all about financial stability. Can be North India, can be South India, East or West. It's not about the region, it's not about the place where it is situated. So what role can telemedicine play to improve the access of uh, pediatric health care? As I emphasized, I told you earlier as well, education is very important. And telemedicine can play a role in two different uh, areas. Telemedicine basically means consultation of the patient with the doctor through medium like video calls, audio calls or text messages. So if they can have a consultation if the child is sick or even the adult is sick, so, uh, sitting from their house wherever they are in the comfort of the zone of the home, uh, they can call the doctor, consult and take the medication accordingly. Telehealth is a broader pers perspective which involves education. If I am talking about telehealth as a per se, it can definitely help build the nutrition of the child as well as everyone at home. How so? They can call the doctor or any person who is educating them on a telemedicine or telehealth platform to know more about what they are not aware of. Maybe a person can call up and ask my child is insisting on taking this particular food. Is it good for the child or not? So it is definitely a matter of just a single call and the outreach is very very good. But the patient will get the, the parent in question will get the current education and they will know what they can give to the child and what is wrong for the child. As I again told you earlier, patient, parents are giving empty calories, they are giving colas, they are giving junk food like chips and all that. They are nothing but empty calories which the child is taking, getting chubbier, getting healthier but without having nutrition. So please education, the right education to balance diet is very important and telehealth per se, not telemedicine, telemedicine is only the consultation. Telehealth per se plays a very very vital role in educating the people who are not aware of the fact about what exactly it is about and that would help out the parents in multiple aspects. Getting a balanced diet, getting a diet chart for, the, for your child or be, be asking a query about your child's health or a question about the child's development. Telehealth has gone a long way to help people around. Me as well, I am actually basically running many helplines which can help people who are not uh, educated or people who are not affording a consultation for with the, with the doctor. As everyone knows by now already the fees are around 500 to 700 rupees per consultation. There are people who can't afford that and unnecessarily they go to the pharmacy and take the medication which is just off the board which is not good for them, not healthy at all for them. So for people like that I am running telemedicine helpline wherein they can call me directly, talk to me, tell me their problems and definitely find the proper prescription for the particular problem and go ahead with that. Even for the children it is the same thing, kindly connect with your doctor before you give anything be it be food or be it be medication. Child's development is extremely important and if, if your child is unable to develop the milestones in spite of being on the healthier side, look for calcium malnutrition, look for proteins and vitamin D deficiency. Given the large population and diverse healthcare infrastructure in India, what are the vaccination challenges that the children are facing in the Indian context? Uh, whatever question you asked me earlier, the first thing would be education. Because the parents, if they have to uh, vaccinate the child, they should know that the child should be vaccinated. That's the first thing, right? At birth, in government hospitals and uh, hospitals which are aided by the government, they do give triple vaccination, that is oral polio, BCG, right? All these things are given very easily and that is the first vaccine which the child receives at birth, okay? Mm -hmm. Subsequently, the patient, the pa sorry, the parents will have to be taught the parents will have to be given the card for vaccination which they have to follow adherently they should have a well uh, pediatric visit for the child every you know uh, there, there are certain dura duration where they have to go in for the uh, visits that visits the pediatrician will assess them assess their weight assess their height their well balanced nutrition and then give the vaccination so again knowledge is the key so if i am telling the parent that i'll give them a card that you know you have to visit this frequently then they have to get the child along and come to the clinic for the vaccination and adhere to the rules. Oral polio is definitely, the drive has uh, done a lot of good to people around. People who can't get their children or who in fact forget to get their children or forget to take the vaccination, 
there are people who are coming home from the government side as you already are aware oral polio vaccination drive has really helped a lot for people who are sitting at home and you know that say they are not uh, able to get the child on time so this vaccination is taking place around the clock every year they are having eradication program almost polio has been eradicated which is good news and that is thanks to vaccinations so as the vice president of HIMSS India what are your initiatives yeah telemedicine in india is definitely uh, i would say a most interesting topic and uh, my most favorite subject actually telemedicine in india is booming it is just starting up right now as the vp of hims india i have lot of plans maybe start off as i told you already i have helplines running in place helping people who can't afford consultations then we are planning to set up lot of uh, you know centers where people can come and take the consultations Uh, at a nominal cost as well and education conferences and educating our fellow doctors about telemedicine telling them about remote patient monitoring the devices which are being used and in fact educating both the patients as well as doctors alike about telemedicine because doctors also you know my own colleagues they have their own restraint about telemedicine especially until covid broke out people were still questioning whether it works doesn't work legalities and all that but once covid broke out we had telemedicine guidelines in place which is helping all doctors practice telemedicine and to know the do's and don'ts of telemedicine so we go ahead and encourage and educate them about the telemedicine guidelines and we also encourage the doctors to follow and uh, you know kind of uh, uh, prioritize telemedicine in their clinic so that accessibility of the patient increases if a patient in the village from 1000 kilometers from here basically has a complaint all he, he earlier before telemedicine outset he had to in fact leave the job maybe or take leaves for a long time then come to the city see the doctor here do the tests and you know it's tedious it is time consuming it is financially strainful for the patient so telemedicine makes it very very easy we are having projects called projects in project step 1 called jan sehat in this there are people who are going out to the community in fact to different villages of north uh, india and uh, they are arranging telemedicine consultation calls with us basically there are set of doctors we are around say four to five doctors and i basically take most of the calls because i like to do this kind of activities so uh, they go to the peripheries and they in fact talk to the patients over there who uh, have lot of issues lot of problem but don't know where to ask and whom to ask and they connect them to us so we evaluate them with the video call talk to them at length and then recommend or prescribe the medications from here so if i have to think of going to the place it is somewhere near ujjain it's a village so if i have to think of going here from ujjain um, to ujjain from bangalore it will know a lot of stress traveling holidays i have to you know kind of uh, my other patients would be having issues and all that but telemedicine has done a huge job so as a vp of hims i'm encouraging this kind of activities going ahead with webinars and seminars promoting this activities and trying to see that telemedicine which is a nook and corner of india and help people who can't afford that's very very important thank you so much ma'am thank you for being with us today we were in conversation with dr halima yasdani an exemplary figure in the field of telemedicine her insights and initiatives promise a brighter future for the field of telemedicine in india and beyond thank you this is alia amreen for karnataka muslims